there are certain restrictive conditions that have to be avoided in any contract or agreement pertaining to patents these conditions are referred to in section 140 of the patents act now it says that it is unlawful and void to have conditions in a contract or a license and the contract or the license may pertain to sale or lease of a patented product or process it may pertain to manufacture or use or it may pertain to work any process protected by patent now in these transactions or in these agreements it is not appropriate to have the following restrictive com- covenants now let's look at them one is a tie in tie in is where a patented product is tied along with a non patented product and there is a restrictive covenant saying that you have to acquire the patented product and the non patented product from the same vendor so in effect through a tie in the vendor who sells the product who is entitled to sell the patented product also ensures that the non patented products are tied along with it now this is a restrictive condition which should not which will be treated as void second is restriction of use for a product the second is restriction of use of a product the terms restrain a person from using certain products the third is restriction of use with pertain to processes other than the patented process so there is a non patented process and there is a restriction on the non patented process which a person cannot make fourth pertains to exclusive grant back requiring the licensee to exclusively grant back or a clause saying that there will not be any challenge to the patent or coercive package licensing where licenses are club together and package together in such a way that you can only take the entire package even if you need only one or two patents now all these four types of restrictions are treated as unlawful and void so in an infringement suit it shall be a defense to show that there was a void contract in force so if there is an infringement suit filed by the patentee the person who is defending can show that he was a licensee and there was a restrictive condition and it will be a defense to show that he was under a restrictive condition against infringement so infringement cannot be proved against the person who operates under a restrictive condition now the act also mentions certain contracts to be valid now there can be a contract where there is a restriction imposed on the exclusive licensee not to sell products this is a restriction on sale other than that of the patentee now this is typically in a franchise agreement where the licensor would ask the franchisee to not to sell any other product so such a condition is valid because you are restraining the person from selling any other product than your own product two it will be valid to have a clause which allows the exclusive supplier to supply new parts of the patented article now the right to supply new parts of a patented article or the right to repair a patented article can be reserved and if such a right is reserved it is be valid and it will not be treated as a restrictive condition now there is also a provision for determination of certain contracts determination as in terminating certain contracts after a patent has ceased to be in force 
a contract or license relating to such patent shall be determined by the purchaser lessee or the licensee now normally a patent runs only up until the term of the patent the 20 year term so if there is a contract that extends beyond the term of the patent then that can be revoked or determined by the purchaser lessee or the licensee this provision section 141 provides for that the party who has to determine it shall give three months notice to the other party